There we go. All right, everybody. Hey, I'm Jeff Hester from Social Adventures, uh, founder of the Six Pack of Peaks Challenge. And I want to thank everybody who's joining us tonight. We've got some great folks who are doing some really amazing things with their hiking groups who are going to join us and talk a little bit about those and how they got started and what they do and how you can connect with them. And, uh, you know, maybe you're in another area. I think everybody here, like the, the folks that we have lined up are in kind of Southern California, except for myself. I'm in Central Oregon. And we had, I had a conversation with Jose, I think earlier, before everyone else joined Don. He's like, oh, are you up there for vacation? I'm like, well, yeah, actually I live here now. So um, you could say that, <laughs> Long, a long-term vacation. Um, so uh, we, we're going to talk about connecting to. I found something interesting because today we're doing. Um, yeah. And if you're if you're not talking to the group, if you could make sure that you mute yourself, you can always unmute yourself if you want to join in. Um, but we just need to try to keep it, you know, keep the keep it on topic. I want to just kick things off with a little story. So, um, and I'll I'll talk about the first uh, group hike that I led, and it was in 2009 in San Clemente in South Orange County. I was living down in San Clemente, and I was in a meetup group. It wasn't a hiking meetup group. It was just sort of like just general all kinds of social stuff. You know, they'd have poker night or they'd do go to dinner somewhere or they'd, you know, uh, and I thought, well, I want to do hikes because I am I was getting ready in my mind to do the John Muir Trail. And so I, I want to lead some hikes. So I organized a hike uh, in the hills to the, on the west side of San Clemente, kind of near San Luis, uh, San Luis, uh, not San Juan Capistrano. And you know, put it up on the meetup and only one person showed up to my <laughs> hike, my group hike. But so I'm like, okay, that's, you know, and, and uh, she's like, oh, is this okay? You know, do you still want to do it? And I'm like, oh, heck yeah, I'm going to do this hike one way or the other, you know, I'm, I'm committed. So, um, so we did the hike and um, now uh, we've been married for uh 11 nice. years so <laughs> um we ended up you know because we way just to go time, you know by ourselves talking and sharing and whatever and we became friends and then eventually we started dating and eventually we got engaged and eventually got married so um that's kind of a just a kind of hunt, fun happy story uh Back then, I was leading group hikes on a group down, a meetup group down in South Orange County, and that is actually where also um, the Six Pack of Peaks kind of started as well. So, the first time that um, you know I kind of called it the Six Pack of Peaks was in 2010, and I led group hikes up each of the original six peaks: so Mount Wilson, Cucamonga, Baldy. Uh, you know, uh, San Bernardino, San Jacinto, and San Gregonio. And uh, uh, it was just like, like a, a ton of fun. So I really enjoy, I like hiking by myself. I like hiking with my friends. I like hiking with my wife. I like hiking with my dogs. But I also like hiking with groups. I think it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to, you know, sort of share the trail and the experience. You get a chance to know people, you know, in a deeper level because you're just out there you know, away from distractions, and um, it can be a lot of fun. Um, all right, let me switch this view here. Let's see if I can figure this out. How I am, I'll just do this. All right, so tonight we have a couple, we have several big groups that are kind of represented tonight. Um, and maybe I'll kick things off. I know, Cece, I know you, you were here for like part time, you're already in Anza Borrego. So Maybe you can kind of kick things off and talk a little bit about hiking beyond the hills and hike beyond the hills. I, I did it again. <laughs> it's that evil other group hiking beyond the hills. You have to send me a dollar every time you say that now. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> 
<laughs> so, um, Hike Beyond the Hill started in 2015. Um, it, it was organically grown. Um, I was trying to train for uh, the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu a hike. And uh, it just, you know, I would post pictures afterwards of hiking Mount Baldy. And then pretty soon, some friends wanted to join us for the next hike. So I said, okay. And then they started inviting their friends. And so after we came back from, the, from Machu Picchu, I continued to hike. And I was trying to search for mountains. And lo and behold, I found Six Pack of Peaks. And I'm like, oh, is that a thing? <laughs> and then so I said, oh, it's a challenge. I'm like, whoa, it'll sign me up. And uh, yeah, so we, I started hiking the six pack of peaks. And I, every time I would do a peak, I would post pictures. And then, you know, a lot of friends go, oh, we want to do that too. So uh, they invited friends. And then pretty soon I was leading hikes, like 15 15 people at a time, Mount Wilson, and it was fun. And then, so it got to the point where now there's a lot of people and I can't take that many people on my hikes. And so I created a, a Facebook group and I was trying to figure out what would I name this because Facebook wants me to name my group and I just, well, hike beyond the hills. So, and then, yeah, so, you know, it started in 2015 and now we are over 1300 members. Um, and, you know, and basically this group is, you know, learning through the years of hiking. I can't even emphasize what safety means being on the trail. Uh, I've trained so many people, brand new hikers who, you know, would just hike along the beach or, you know, the local trails and now they're hiking up the mountains. And then they join my hikes and they, they're carrying small bottles of water and they're not prepared. They're, you know, I always see like the little backpacks with them and I always wonder what's in your pack. And then, you know, we would be at the point where we're now um, providing support to this person because they're depleted, they're, they're cramping. So we're giving them our electrolytes, our snacks and everything. So. Uh, from that, it grew to the point where, you know, let's focus our hiking more towards educating hikers on how to hike safely up on the mountain. And so the more we would educate them, the better, you know, the community, hiking community will be. And, you know, hopefully they'll pass on that uh, safety hiking education to their peers. And, you know, it's better, it's better serving the community. So that's the philosophy of um, hike beyond the hills is to hike safely and leave no trace. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think there's been, uh, you know, a lot of opportunity, especially since, um, you know, COVID, you know, like a lot of people for when the COVID first hit, like, well, what can I do? I can't, you know, go to the movie theater or the mall or go whatever. So, but I can go out and hike. So I'll do that, you know? And, there were a lot of new people that were joining the trails that don't didn't necessarily know about leave no trace or know that you need to how much water to carry you know for to be safe or, and and uh, how to navigate and all of those things and so uh, it's that's that's really great. What yeah, so I just also oh I'm sorry I just want to do a shout out to my co-leader right there Phil Yoho. He's a hey. former Marines and I don't I'm very. I'm very selective in, in who is going to be leading my hikes. And, and, and I only allow Phil <laughs> to lead my hikes because I know he is safe. He is knowledgeable uh, about Patience. the mountains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Shout out to Phil. Hey, Phil. Hey, Philip. So, oh, and, and I have to ask, uh, Cece, how many times have you finished the six pack of peaks challenge? This is, is it? Oh, I've lost track. So is this my eighth year? <laughs> this is your ninth year. You've done it eight year. times. This is your ninth year. I've yeah. lost track. <laughs> yeah. Well, assuming you finish this year, it's not over yet. You haven't done oh, it yet. Well, I'm going to have to finish it. I'm hiking Kilimanjaro in September. All right. All right. Yes. With 
there's 10 of us going. So you got yeah. a goal. That's awesome. Yep. Um, how do people find Hike Beyond the Hills if they're interested? And in, like, what kind of area do you, do they go through Facebook or? Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, people find me. Um, and, you know, and then uh, I have it, my group on Facebook is a closed group. So they, you know, you have to answer three questions. So I know that you're not a, a fake person <laughs> just trying to get in. So, yeah, uh, yeah, Facebook and um, Instagram. Cool. Well, thanks. Thanks, CC. And uh, I don't know. Hey, Philip, do you want to add anything to what CC said? Well, I don't know what I could add. Um, great group to be in. Um, love CC to death. Uh, I don't want you dead though, but I do love you. Um, <laughs> Feelings mutual. I started hiking with CC. I think it was either 2016 or 2017. Um, we were doing uh, Mount Baldy <laughs> for the Climb for Heroes, and CC was filling in for you, Jeff. Uh, for yeah, I think I was hikers. in Korea that year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a picture taken of the whole group for SoCal hikers. And I was holding one side of the American flag and Pascal, her husband was holding the other side of the American flag. And then that was the last I saw of CC and the group. We went on, I did my thing. And about six months later, I think I was doing San Bernardino Peak with a friend <laughs> and CC was coming down with her group from the, uh, well, what's that uh, memorial called? The, um, the Washington Memorial? The Washington, Washington Memorial. Memorial. So she was coming down and I was going up or she was crossing in front of me. And I said, hey, I know you. And she gives me this look like, uh, no, I don't know <laughs> you. <laughs> and we talked, we hiked up to the summit together. They photobombed my summit picture. No, you um, asked then, us to photobomb it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that night I ended up joining the group and maybe... A year or two later is when I became a co-lead for her, uh, which I really enjoyed doing. My very first official hike as a leader for Hike Beyond the Hills, I had about 10 people that were going. And by the time the day before rolled up, we were going to do Baden-Powell. Everybody canceled except for one guy um, for various reasons. Um, but then when I woke up in the morning, I'm getting ready to go on the hike. I checked my messages and he had canceled as well. So my very first official hike as a hike beyond the hills lead was a solo hike. So my Ooh. first Aww. official group. Almost like solo. mine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's my story. All right. Hey. Um, oh, it's 100% success rate. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so, and the guy um, that canceled last, he, he actually showed up. He said he'd be there late, and he showed up late. He uh, hiked down with me. Um, let's see. Let's get um, Jose. Do you want to talk a little bit about your group, um, Hiking Adventures for All? Tell us a little bit about, like, you know, like how that got started. Oh, I'm sorry, you're on mute, by the way. Whoop. There, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, now I can. Okay, yeah. So uh, before before even I started Hiking Adventures for All, I was on Meetup. Uh, I've been on Meetup for maybe eight years. I've been hiking on there. I had no social media. So I, the, only, the only place I was able to find groups was through Meetup. So I started hiking with them and I kind of wasn't able to find a group that was kind of suiting what I was looking for. So I started solo hiking. And I know, <clears throat> I mean, there's a pros and cons to that. I mean, if you get hurt, you better have an eye reach or some type of communication to get help, you know? But like I said, I couldn't find really anybody that would kind of like go out with me where I would want to. So then um, a buddy of mine, decided to, he asked me, he's like, why don't we start a group? So you could, you know, you could have find people that might want to join your, your hikes. So by that time, I already, like I said, I was on Meetup. We started the group on Meetup and I already have hiked with so many people on Meetup that 
they just started um, following me. And uh, little by little, like, I mean, it started growing. Um, and, you know, I just pretty much did it. So I went hike for my, by myself, <laughs> you know, and it just blew up to more. Obviously, I, uh, when we started the group, I, I kind of went down through a list of things that I wanted to the group to kind of um, focus on uh, just from my experience with other groups. Like, uh, could I you mean, name, could you name like one or two? Of groups that I've hiked with? No, like the things that you wanted to focus on. What oh, was important? For sure. For your group? One thing that happened to me that I will never forget was that I got left. Uh, I got left behind. I signed up for something that I, I was obviously able to finish it, but I wasn't able to keep up with the people. Mm. So I got left behind, you know, and uh, I mean, uh, I had all trails by then, so I already knew how to navigate, but it kind of feels scary when you don't go, you don't know that trail. It's your first time on the trail and they leave you. So number one goal was, number one rule was no, nobody left behind. Um, and on, the, on those hikes, you could, I mean, every, every hike that I've had, I'm the one in the back. I don't, I don't, I don't separate from the last person. Uh, I'd rather see the people coming down, knowing that they're already summit and on their way back safely, than having the last person struggling and not knowing if they even, if they even made it to the top. Uh, so that was one, my, one of my big rules. Uh, nobody left behind, you know? That's a good one. Uh, yeah, and then just safety, just safety overall, you know, sticking together, have a buddy system, have somebody next to you at all times. Uh, and that's, and pretty much those are two of the main ones that I, I really, um, focus on just safety, you know, mostly safety. That That's one thing I always preach. And I always, uh, tell everybody right before we start a hike. I, um, let's see, I'll, uh, get in here. Uh, I just want to jump in because, uh, one of the, one of the, when I was doing like group hikes that are longer, like one of the, one of the first hikes on the six pack was Mount Wilson. And we were going at the time when Chantry flats was back, back when it was open before all the fires, you know, it was like a 13 mile or more, uh, route, a lot of vertical gain. And, and so one of the things, and I was doing it through meetup and one of the requirements I had was that I've hiked with you before. So I know your ability level. To, to, to RSVP, you must have hiked with me before. And there was one guy uh, who was a college student at um, Cal State Fullerton. And he, he contacted me, he says, you know, I haven't hiked with you yet, you know, but, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm really fit. You know, I play volleyball. I'm, you know, I'm training for a big backpacking trip in Glacier National Park with my college buddies. And I really want to do these hikes with you. You know, can I do it? Can I, you know, and I, and I kind of went, well, you know, it's against my rule really, but I'll, I, you know, I'll get, yeah, I figure he's a college student, you know, he's gotta be young and fit. And, uh, he, as we were about a mile away from the summit of Wilson, his legs were cramping so badly that he would take like one or two steps and have to stop and one or two steps and have to stop. And, and it was a really slow grind. And I stayed back with him, like you're saying, Jose. And, you know, I just kind of talked him through it. You know, I'm like, hey, you know, how are you doing? You know, you drinking enough water, okay. And, and, I, and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm holding you up. And I'm like, no worry about it. I said, I've been there. I, and I, I just, you know, like encourage him. And, and it took about half an hour to get to where we saw the observatory and everybody else was waiting for us there. And so we stopped and, and sat down and had lunch and, and sat there for about a half an hour and he got a chance to rest and, and going down, he was completely fine. Different muscles, he was totally fine. But at the end he goes, you know, Jeff, I think, I think I'm not quite ready to join these other hikes. <laughs> and so like, how do you, that's the thing though, like you have to be aware when you're in a group uh, you have to have right, like, and you clear, know what? I always yeah, clear instructions and like what expectations, you know. Yeah, what you know, you I, I, from them? right, you know, I, I and and for meetup, like I said, I started on meetup. You know, meetup. Uh, 
you have a, the ability of uh, putting a limit on your members, how many how many attendees you have. Right. Facebook or uh, Instagram, you really don't, you know? So you could have 30, 40 people joining and you have no control over who you're going to let in or not. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and, and yeah. Uh-oh, I think we just lost Jose. Um, okay. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to add is that we get new hikers with our group and most of them have commented on, they've joined hiking groups where they were left behind. Um, and so that, you know, one of the mantras of my group is that no hikers left behind. And one of the things I do, and sometimes, you know, it annoys people, especially the new ones, who are coming in to join my group who don't know us is that I do my due diligence first. If I'm, if you're new to me, I've never hiked with you. I want you to show proof of the last big hike that you've done, especially if we're doing one of the six pack of peaks. And, you know, and cause you know, through the years I've learned in the beginning where like you, Jeff, I did exactly the same thing. It's also, it was also on Mount Wilson. Uh, so, you know, we're, literally short of resuscitating this hiker uh, because he was, you know, they, it, this, this hike was just too much for them. Um, so, yeah, so I totally agree. No hiker left behind is a, is a must for big hikes. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah that's, I think that's very important, especially, like I said, with us, that that's one thing. And, and with me, I always carry extra everything. My bag probably weighs 30 to 40 pounds, and I only need probably a two liters just to drink for myself. Or I could do San Asito with two liters of water, fine. But I'll carry five liters, extra electrolytes. I just, I, I guess I feel a sense of responsibility when I do take group a group up. I know we're all adults. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's an adult. Everybody is um, pretty much, you, you put up the waiver there that you're not res responsible for them. But at the end of the day, you're out there. And I mean, I, I personally, like I said, I've got left behind and it doesn't feel that great. <laughs> you know, and I just don't want anybody to feel like that. And I just look for signs, you know. I mean, you could tell when a person's struggling, elevation sickness, when, they're, when they start turning colors, you know. I just stop them and turn around. I have no problem ever turning around. Like I said, these, these peaks now, when I, guide the, when I take the groups up, it's not for personal um, gain. I've done these peaks so many times that it's not even like um, my thrill is going traversing, mountaineering, doing something else. You know, uh, when I do group hikes, it's just for them to go ahead and take take on the six peak challenge. You know, we do all twelve <laughs> peaks. Sometimes I do them three, four times a year. I mean, yeah. I, last year we did Gorgonio five times. You know, C to C a couple of times. We take yeah. the nice little routes. <laughs> you know, so um, That's yeah, awesome. it's it's fun. You know. Hey, I, 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 we also have uh, Jonathan Flores from Outdoor Adventures Plus. Jonathan, hey, welcome. Thank I'm you gonna, for having me. Yeah, so um, tell us a little bit about Outdoor Adventures Plus and you know, kind of like how you guys got started and what you're about and uh, maybe some of the advice you have for somebody who wants to do something similar in another area because we have people from all over the country you know, who are interested in hiking we have now 17 challenges for the six pack and we have lots of other people who are joining us from, you know, just doing regular hikes, you know, um, doesn't have to be a mountain or a peak or anything like that. But. Okay. Well, my name is Jonathan. A lot of people in the community do know me as Juan. Uh, thanks to our buddy, Justin, uh, which I know Jeff was on his podcast on the just Trek podcast recently. Oh, that was, fun. um, and, uh, so he kind of, donned me that name and it kind of stuck so a lot of people call me Juan as well but I am Jonathan Flores I am the founder of Outdoor Directors Plus um, we were founded back in 2020 actually of March 13th which is like I think right when Monday. COVID hit <laughs> exactly um, and the crazy thing is is that I got invited I had never really done any kind of big hiking um, but I got invited by some friends and they took me to Utah as um, soon as we got to Utah, uh, did Angel's Landing. Um, that was an experience in itself. I was in no shape. 
um, you know, of hiking that, but I did it. And I think that's where the itch uh, came in and I kind of kicked off from there. So uh, coming back, you know, to society, uh, everything shutting down, um, it was kind of one of those things that I think it was on the way down from Angel's Landing. Uh, we were talking and we're like, hey, we should start a group, you know. At first, it was going to be a a church ministry in a sense, you know, to kind of get people from the church to go outdoors and, and whatnot. But uh, that didn't fall through. And eventually, they started getting busy with things. And I was at a point where I was kind of just going to step away from it and that was it and they basically called me and they said hey uh, we kind of we're busy we're too busy with our life and we we're just wondering if you wanted to run it on your own and so I did um it was it has been one of those things uh, up and down you know a lot of people join people leave uh for various reasons you know either it's too hard or uh, maybe they want something a little bit more challenging um, but that was the main goal from the get-go with us is, and I say us because I always include everybody who basically has joined us on like any kind of hike. Um, I made it a point to make it a group to where we could start off not really knowing much and growing together as months and years uh, went on. Um, so my hiking journey started back in 2015, and it was just local hikes here in uh, Bakersfield, California, because that's where I'm at. I'm in the central Central Valley of California. Okay, yeah. So that was our goal, and over the years, we've adapted. Um, we do like to educate people on safety, as well as land acknowledgments, um, you know, um, and just kind of providing experiences for people to be able to see the beauty that we've been able to see and to be able to share that with people, that in itself is, is uh, one of the joys as well as one of the, the perks uh, to being a lead to one of these groups. That's awesome. And how do people like, how, what, you know, where your, your group is based around the uh, Bakersfield or? <clears throat> yeah, I always tell people we're from Bakersfield, but um, I go about everywhere. We go to these in Sierras. We spend time in uh, the Santa Monica Mountains a lot. Um, uh, San Gabriel's, the San Bernardino Mountains. I mean, anywhere and everywhere that there's a hike we can go to, then great. Uh, we do spend a lot of time in the Central Coast during the summers. And which is crazy because I know you did your inaugural season for the Central, Central Coast, Coast Six Challenge, Pack of Peaks. Yeah. So uh, hopefully I'm able to sign up for that as well. And then uh, we do a lot of stuff through Big Sur, through the Redwoods. Oh, nice. um, so a lot of these experiences that we, we get together, you know, um, we like to collaborate with a lot of different groups, uh, you know, Just Trek, uh, We Explore Earth and, um, you know, on trail with, and there, I know, you know, I have not yet met Jose yet, um, no, you know, haven't. personally, um, and, uh, and uh, what is it, Hike Beyond the Hills, I have not met as well, but I do know a lot of people in the community, and I think that's one of the greatest things is being able to say that I've met and have formed a lot of good uh, friendships through uh, this community in itself. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to, I'm going to bring, um, Cece had to go. She's, uh, you know, on her way through Anza Borrego. So we'll respect that. Um, I'm going to add Jose back in and I don't know, is there anybody else? I want to, I want to try to get, I saw somebody, um, maybe another Jose from, uh, teachers that hike or teachers you know, that trek teachers that trek. Sorry. Yes. I get my, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Hello, I'm I'm Jose. I'm not sure if my video is working. I'm I'm in my car right now. I haven't used Zoom since the 2020 school year, so you have to apologize <laughs> or you'll have to forgive me for that. So sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm Jose. I, I run the Teachers at Trek uh, crew. 
Um, started it in 2021. You know, I was just doing a lot of hiking on my own. Um, I, I, like I assume Johnson. you're a teacher. Yes, I'm a teacher. Sorry, <laughs> I, I teach uh, middle school middle school PE. So, yeah, middle school PE. Um, I was doing a lot of hiking on my own uh, when the pandemic hit. You know, before that, I was sticking to just local trails. Bridge to Nowhere was like my biggest hike. Um, I did your challenge. I did Strawberry Peak, my first peak, uh, May of 2020. And then the next year, I figured, you know what? I hike a lot alone. I'm sure there's teachers out here hiking. Why not start a group? And so I, I started that Teachers at Trek group. Um, I've been able to meet a lot of awesome educators, uh, principals, assistant principals. We have ladies that work in the cafeteria that come out and hike with us. So it really is, you know, not just teachers, but everyone in education. And, um, you know, we're starting to get people that hike with us that are not even educators, which is cool. So I'm just all about, you know, enjoying nature. That's kind of what got me out there is, is I love seeing lizards scurrying around and snakes and hawks in the sky. Um, and, you know, the, the exercise is an added benefit. So, yeah, it, it's been a really great time just leading a group, um, bringing people together and just developing those friendships. Hey, um, I'm gonna, that's awesome, Jose. Thank you for you know, just kind of jumping in. Um, we have a question from Brian, just about like those of you, and, and we'll leave you guys here, and maybe I'll actually bring in Philip as well, since Cece had popped off, if we'll add Philip in here. And so this is a question for each of you. I'll start with Jose De La Rosa. Um, do you have like a minimum speed that members should maintain? You know, like what are, how do you set those expectations for, you know, slow or fast or whatever? Uh, with us, we get, uh, with us, it, it, it's, uh, it's a little different. We, we, we usually get anything from beginners to advanced. So, and usually we have large groups. So we split the groups just to, so we won't have to be, running up there like a herd, you know, all, all, all together. So we'll have advanced in the front and intermediate, usually I'll with the slow group in the back. Uh, we really don't set a pace, honestly, because I think we, we, every hike, we accommodate everybody pretty much. Okay. How about how about Philip? How about you guys with hike beyond the hills? Do you you know have like expectations, or how do you communicate pace? Uh, CC normally when she puts a hike together, she'll put out an expectation for you know so many miles per hour, uh, and basically you know know yourself, know your ability. Um, but never is there ever we could have somebody with us that's really slow, um, and we deal with it. Uh, nobody ever gets left behind. Uh, my own hikes that I lead uh, as a hike beyond the hills uh, leader um, are more specialized towards newer hikers, uh, getting them to complete the six pack of peaks challenge. Uh, I find there's a lot of people out there who want to do the challenge, but have no idea where to start or what to do. Uh, so I focus on, I do it for myself. So I always end up doing all the peaks twice every year um, for the last, I don't know, eight years. Um, so basically it's getting people up there. Uh, I've been with people that are, you know, a mile an hour sometimes it's painful at times, but they get up to the peak safely and they get back down safely. So that's, that's the important thing for me. It's not a matter of the speed. It's safely getting the, everything accomplished. Awesome. And I see, uh, just Trek just joined. So thanks for joining Justin. Uh, Jonathan, how about you guys? Do you set like, you know, like you have to be this fast or do you split up in groups? What do you, what, how do you handle that when you're on a, with a big group? Actually, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because I am six, three. Um, I do have a long stride. Um, and a lot of people that do join us are a little bit shorter. Um, you know, <laughs> my, you know, my wife's five foot. So you could imagine how, her steps, according to mine, are, are way different. But uh, um, I do, when I post any kind of hike or any kind of uh, information details on the group chats that we create for each event, um, we're usually just to let people know what 
the the difficulty is um, not so much on pace um, because it's kind of hard because you have I mean you can have 15 people and 15 people are all going to have a different stride a different pace um, and like I said when I lead hikes I do um, I'm on my own in a sense you know um, I have had help recently from from a friend and obviously I, I I had to put it out there to gain some ambassadors that wanted to represent Outdoor Adventures Plus and um, I found two new leads um, you know one of them being Denise Graves and and another one is Rudy Carrillo who a lot of people do know um, and Rudy has actually been on several of our hikes um, over the past few months and he's actually been a good sweeper um, and he, the crazy thing is it's like this guy he just he volunteered I mean nobody likes to be a sweep I mean you know especially if you got this kind of like pace where you want to keep the the group but uh Rudy is a champ and he actually volunteers to be in the back with people who are a little bit slower um but what we tend to do is basically when we're on trail and if we're ahead a bit you know we stop the whole group stops until everybody catches up everybody catches a breath and I ask everybody, is everyone okay? Everyone doing you doing good? Um, and as far as everyone's ready to go, and we proceed forward. And you know, it's it's just there are little pit stops that you make. You know, you stop along the way where you're able to uh, allow the rest of the group to catch up and rest. You know, for a few minutes, and then proceed forward. I got a question, kind of just like. I'll open up to any of you. And I, and by the way, at Christelle, I wanted to, you know, say hi to you. Thank you for joining. You've, I, I saw in the chat, you've got a group on Facebook called San Diego Happy Feet. And you do the San Diego and the SoCal six pack every year. So yeah. welcome. Um, you. Maybe you want to sit, share just a, a, a word about your group and uh, yeah, so to and so forth. Yeah, no, that's great. So um, we're lucky in San Diego. Our six pack of peak is uh, actually a little bit easier. So for my group, it's a good kind of training. And then so we start with San Diego in January, February. And uh, next month, we'll be heading up to LA to all the, the SoCal uh, six peaks. So it's good training. Um, my group is a little bit newer, a uh, smaller group, um, but I've um, I've hiked with Jose uh, up in LA and um, so I love all the good challenging hikes um, and a lot of my group is also looking for a very adventurous kind of fast paced um, hike. And uh, I see you guys kind of talking about like pace and how do you set that up and uh, um, for us it's um, I guess on the smaller hikes, anything like eight miles or less, we'll kind of wait for each other. On the longer hike, 12, mi 12 miles or more, what we end up doing is a little bit like Jose, we're uh, set up with walkie talkies and have like different group, like a head group, uh, middle group, mid pace and slower group. And we kind of keep an eye on each other. So like that, the one that kind of want to go fast and kind of knock it out are able to and, uh, and we keep everybody safe. Yeah. Great advice. And I like the walkie talkie thing. That's a, that's for a, a large group when you're going to split up into fast and slow paced groups. That's a good way to stay in touch. Um, one of the things that I like to do when I'm leading a group hike and as far as like setting expectations for folks is to, um, I have a saying like no tourists allowed. And I I'll explain a little bit about <laughs> what I mean by that. Um, I think there's something about being in a large group on a hike, you know, especially if if you haven't done that trail before or that route where you kind of check out and you feel like, well, I'm not leading this. I'm just going to follow everybody else and I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to know about, you know, where the trail goes and where the water is and, you know, where the exit route is in case something happens or any of those things. And in other words, you're kind of like a hiking tourist in my mind. You're, you're not taking res personal responsibility for yourself. And so that's one of the things that I'll reinforce with folks is that, you know, no tourists allowed on this. You have to be prepared to navigate, you know, have all trails or Gaia GPS or whatever it is, 
have a paper map, have not, you know, have looked at it and know what the route looks like and, and know that you've got the, you know, the 10 essentials or whatever, you know, an, an appropriate amount of water and electrolytes and snacks and all of those things. And that somebody knows where you are and all of those, the, the safety tips. And um, I think that it's easy in a lot of big groups for people to just kind of, kind of get lazy about that and, and, and just kind of go along. And that's where sometimes things get, you know, people get in trouble. Like if you, if for some reason somebody did get separated, if they're not self-sufficient and they don't have all of those things, it could be a real problem. And um, I, I have to admit, I've done this myself. So I was invited years ago, um, before the six pack of peaks, I was blogging at SoCal Hiker. And uh, there was a couple other blogger friends that were like, oh, let's go do Whale Peak in Anza Borrego. And my friend was going to lead this hike. You know, he planned it. And these, you know, I was up in Orange County. We had another guy from LA. We all, you know, we drove down together, met up with this guy. We drove out to the desert and we're following this guy. We're calling Derek from 100 Peaks. So I'm going to call him out. And uh, we're headed up to Whale Peak and we make it up there fine. But then on our way back to the trailhead, we got a little bit turned around, you know, like a little bit lost. I mean, we, we found our way out. We got back to the car and all that. But the, the reality was, is that I was, you know, basically being a tourist. I felt like, oh, cool. I don't have to do any preparation or think about it or worry about it because I'm just following Derek. And, uh, and sure enough, you know, we, uh, it would have been smart if I had, uh, you know, planned accordingly. So I always try to emphasize for folks to like, be prepared to be self-sufficient. Don't just be a tourist on this, on this hike. If I can add in there a little bit, Jeff, um, I remember that story about Derek's hike, Quail Peak, one of my favorite peaks, by the way, um, the whole, you know, don't be a tourist thing. I I'm all about that, but I like to and I thrive basically on educating people on the trail uh, about what they should have had with them and what they need to bring next time. Um, I like to teach land navigation while we're hiking on the trail because you can teach very basic land navigation, just talking to people uh, about the, you know, the trail, the surrounding areas, exit routes, things like that, or egress routes. Um, so education is really important uh, for me when I'm on a hike. Usually when I'm with CC, I'm the sweep. And usually the people in the back are the ones that weren't prepared uh, and don't have the things that they should have had. So those are the people I'm talking to and educating. Uh, and it's amazing how many people I see on the trail nowadays that I've seen in the past. And now they have all the gear and now they're taking land navigation classes uh, or they remember those little bits of things that I taught them on the trail about their compass that they were carrying that was a terrible compass. Uh, or they didn't even know how to use the compass because uh, they use those little button compasses and those things are worthless folks. I'm oh, sure yeah. everybody knows <laughs> that, but they're worthless. Don't use them. Um, buy a good one. REI has great ones. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to add that in there. Teaching is really important on the trail. Very. Uh, all right. So we've got a bunch of different questions that have come in. So I'm going to try to pick up on a few of these. Uh, Fawn is asking, I really for you, Christelle, how to join San Diego Happy Feet to do the six pack of peaks. How do they find you? It's on Facebook, is it? Or Yeah, it is on Facebook. Uh, just uh, yeah, look for San Diego Happy Feet and I uh, should be, but I can uh, send a link in the message as well. Yeah, and we'll, I, I see like Linda has shared some links for um, hiking adventures for all. So we've got their Instagram, Facebook and meetup pages. Um, we'll try to get links to everybody's thing. So if, if we, if you have a group and we didn't get to you or whatever, I, my apologies, we'll try to uh, make sure that we at least have links to that um, when we post the video so that anybody can go back and see that and find the links and make it easy for folks. Um, Kristen's asking, you know, any tips for, from, for anybody really, uh, for those who are interested in starting a hiking group of their own. First and foremost, as a hiking lead, you need to be prepared. You need to already know the trail. I don't take people on a hike unless I've already hiked the trail. 
Uh, so you need to know the trail, you need to know the gear, you need to be prepared to help other people while you're on the trail, even if you don't have to, but you need to be prepared to. Uh, you should take some type of wilderness first aid training. Uh, both CC and I are wilderness first responders um, through Knowles and REI. Um, land navigation is really important. I used to teach that in the Marine Corps, so I like to still teach it today. Uh, but there's classes out there through REI, through uh, um, the Sierra Club. There's all kinds of classes out there people can take. So if you're going to lead groups, be prepared to lead the group. You're the lead. You're you're responsible for those individuals. Yeah. Yeah. To add to that, yeah, it's something that you're comfortable with leading people, something that you know what you're capable of. and yeah, do your homework. Like, make sure you're 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 ready for everything. Yeah, I would kind of uh, chime in as well and say that I know that the the outdoor community in itself has a lot of groups. There's a lot of groups to be able to join. Um, so, a good suggestion is if you do want to become a hiking lead, obviously take those those safety. Uh, those safety courses, it's plus. Um, constantly carry your ten uh, the 10 essentials. Um, that's heavily emphasized. And then carry some extra, obviously, for other individuals. But, uh, but yeah, join, join a group. Kind of get a feel for the group. See what the leads do. Um, what it's all about. The dynamic of it. Uh, because every group offers something different. Not everyone is the same. Um, us in a, in a sense we do camping we do uh backpacking trail running um and hiking as well um you know where other groups such as like jose's they do some mountaineering you know and i don't do that um so every group is going to offer something different so maybe join a group kind of get a feel for it and maybe you don't even start a group maybe you just become a part of the group that you you started joining um but it's definitely one of those things to look at is, is to make sure you know what you're doing. You know, um, you can't just jump into it and say, Hey, I'm going to be a group lead. Let's go on a hike. And then, you know, you got two or three people in the group that you've invited or either dying because of hydrate, uh, dehydration or, you know, just little things like that. Yeah, uh, that's a great point, great point. Um, I think it also depends on the kind of hikes you're doing though too, right? I mean, like um, that, I told the story of my first group hike and that was a 4.6 mile hike in sort of the local, you know, hills next to San Clemente. So it's not, you're in sight, you know, it's not really, in, you're not in the back country. You're not at at risk. If you, if worst case, you you walk half a mile and you're back in, suburbia so um it, it could depend on that a little bit but um um i i like that tip of like trying a bunch of other different groups because they're everyone everyone is different you know some um and and you you have to kind of find what like is works for you i had a uh, a guy who joined one of my group hikes on cucamonga peak and he was a trail runner and, you know, we like got together and we took a group shot at the trailhead. And that was the last time we saw him. And this was a group hike and like he took off and we never saw him again. And afterwards, you know, I'm like, because I feel responsible you know, as the leader, you know, like I kind of feel responsible for this guy. Right. You know, and so I'm like, you know, messaging him, hey, did you get back? OK, you know, we never saw you. And he's like, well, I got lost on the way back. But I finally got back and I was fine. And, and I'm like, yeah, you know, um, if you're going to run, you know, there actually are like trail running groups you could join. <laughs> this is not a trail running group. So it's just about, you know, making sure that you have the, the, the group of people that um, have similar objectives, similar ability, um, and that, you know, you kind of click with. And that's the other part, you know, like some, some groups you will and some groups you won't. So um, that's that's a great yeah. tip. Yeah, you have to figure out what type of uh, people you want to target. You know, what type of people you want to uh, attract because that has a lot to do with it. For sure. Yeah, I think right, Jose. We've had this conversation now that he's brought in a couple other leads. Um, the diversity in the 
skill level of hikers with hiking adventures for all creates Jose's had a sort of a tiered approach um, to ensuring that everybody completes safely. But um, it does take a lot of patience in terms of starting a group. I, I wanted to chime in. I was a solo hiker, loved solo hiking, and I was actually very nervous um, hiking with a group. And although I'm very much responsible for that, part of the um, draw of a group and the first hike I did with Jose was Iron Mountain, um, was that I could do something a little more challenging <laughs> that I wouldn't do on my own, right? I'd complete the six right. pack, which I'd wanted to do for a really long time. Um, but the unknown of what that group would be like um, was sort of a fear factor. And so figuring out that culture is really important. I know several people mentioned that, and I was really fortunate that this particular group was awesome. Um, I struggled on that hike. It was probably a reach and Jose stayed with me and uh, it, he carried extra water, all those things you think about. So I think what stuck with me, what made me like hiking with groups was the level of responsibility he took for everybody on that trail. And it's a heavy responsibility watching him now. It's he's sometimes there for an extra two hours over someone else, making sure they get out safely. He gets home very late. So there's there's a heavy weight to that. So I really appreciate that leadership from everybody here with their groups. Yeah. yeah. It could have to you for doing Iron Mountain. Yeah. That, 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 that <laughs> Jose. Every I mean, once in a while, I get somebody goes, Hey, you should add Iron Mountain to the six pack. And I'm like, uh, I don't no. know if I want to send people. I don't like that's yes. another <laughs> next level thing, you know? Yeah. That's, a, that's a, you know, it, she's, it's not dubbed La Toxica for nothing. No, I mean, she's, a, she's a toxic mountain, is what it is. Oh, <laughs> she is, and she was off my list, and somehow they convinced me to do it. And then from there, it opened a can of worms, and we're like, "What are we doing next?" And we created a huge bucket list for last year. And so, um, Jose can get everybody down that rabbit hole. He has a way of doing that. So, yeah, yeah. And somebody <laughs> left a comment: um, "Don't add Iron Mountain to the six pack." No, we're not adding <laughs> Iron to the six pack. No worries. Uh, <laughs> Um, well, awesome. Uh, any other questions about setting up groups or any tips, any other like words of advice for folks who are looking for a group? I mean, obviously there's places like Facebook, there's meetup, there's other social media like Instagram. I know like, gosh, I guess TikTok even, I don't know if there's any, there's probably yeah. groups that have come out of that, you know? No. I have some advice, I think, for Jose, I think from teachers at Trek, or, or I think it was him that asked. Um, and Facebook, I know that uh, Meetup has a limit of, of users or like hikers that you want to have. But what I used to do when I used to lead my my groups is I would create an, an open invite just to let people know on on Facebook. And then I would create a private group based on people's interest. And then once I vetted those people, I would allow them to join the private group, which was limited to a certain amount of people. And that's how I managed my my groups on Facebook. Ah, oh, cool. Yeah. I used to lead a- uh, Like, you know, it's like a, a Russian doll, you know, like there's a, <laughs> a group inside of a group inside of a group, you know? <laughs> yeah, I used to lead hikes for, um, for LA Trail hikers. Uh, we started a group uh, back in 2008, and most recently we stopped the the group uh, when COVID started. It was just uh, not a good time to to continue big groups, and uh, so far uh, we haven't re restarted the group anymore. But we did have up to like 17,000 followers on LA Trail Hikers. Holy cow! Wow. Anyways, just thought I'd share that. Oh, hey, uh, for anybody here, Jenny asked the question, you know, for people who are leading hikes, how do you navigate between the hikers who just want to reach the peak versus hikers who want to stop and take a lot of pictures and soak their feet in the creek and, you know, kind of smell the flowers? Well, Jose has a lot of experience with that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we, in our group, Jose asks everybody in the group, so he sets standard rules, right, Jose, before we start, if you stop um, to, for a bathroom right. break or to take photos, please tell someone. 
So that way, whoever's pacing that section of the group is able then to wait and ensure that everybody's back together. We don't lose anyone, but it kind of goes back. You'll see people shift from the fast pace down to the slow pace. Um, I love taking photographs. So Jose deals with that a lot. Tony does as well. You'll see him post a million videos. So um, it, it kind of goes with the flow of the, of the group, the way Jose has it set up, right? Yes. Yeah, it's all yeah, about we try to, we try to, like I said, we try to accommodate every, every, right. And, and you know what, um, more, a lot of my attendees are from Mita. So I've hiked with them before. So I know kind of there's, you know, like, it's amazing. We get 50 people and I know all of them by name. I don't know how, but I know them all by name and I know <laughs> they're scalable. So I know what I'm getting into. When, when, once I see the list, of the people that signed up, I already know what we're gonna, how long we're gonna take, or what's gonna happen. You know, I mean, it's still unpredictable, but you kind of have an idea. You know, you know who's yeah, gonna be at the front like of the what... pack and who's gonna be at the back. And I and I <laughs> I think like what you were saying, Linda, it's sort of about setting expectations going in, and that's one of the things that I try to do when I lead a, a group hike is be very, very clear about, you know, like how it's going to go. You know, we're meeting, you know, we're meeting at, at eight o'clock. We're going to start hiking at promptly at 815. If you're late, you know, that's on you, you know, we're not because there's no cell service. There's no way for us to know what's happening. And then, you know, we're going to stop at a mile and a half, you know, at this, at this junction, and we're going to regroup there. So if we might stretch out a little bit, that's fine. But we're going to, when, you know, whoever gets to that junction first, they stop and until we all collect, we're going to stop at the, at the summit, if we're going to a peak or something like that. And, and then we're going to, you know, make sure when we get back to the, going back to the trailhead that we, everybody returns, you know, so, you know, just kind of setting those expectations and they could be different for right. depending on the group and who it is and what the objectives are, if you're running or going slow or just starting out or taking pictures or whatever. So. Um, it's just really about communication. Right. One one other thing I still I one other thing I, I wanted I wanted to drop in uh, for safety. What, what we started doing last year, or what, what I came up with was um, a sign up sheet, where I have every member that attends that hike sign that sheet, and we get a, an emergency phone number because a lot of them don't have um, eye reaches or no cell service or if something happens where they're not able to communicate, we have some, at least some type of information that we could contact a family member or somebody. Uh, so that's something that I've, I've kind of implemented on our, on our, on our hikes a little. Oh, I think we lost Jose there, but uh, uh, that's a great suggestion. And I, I would love to see a copy of that. That might be some like a resource to share, you know, just, I, I like the idea of having the emergency contact. I mean, you know, first of all, you have like a list of everybody who's there. So you know how many people are there and you can kind of count heads when, when you get back. But you also, if, if for some reason, God forbid, you need to, you know, reach out to their emergency contact for whatever reason, you, you know who it is and you have a phone number. And, um, you know, I, I have, that's not something that I've normally done, but that's a great idea. Yeah, I think that's one of those things that I've done as well. I think when we did San Gorgonio one time, um, I actually got everybody's information, um, names, uh, email addresses to like an emergency contact as well as a number of and the name of that person. And I made a copy, folded it up and left it in the, on the dash um, in case we didn't come down when we needed to. Um, at least that paperwork was there and they knew who to look for. Um, and it, it, that's one of the things that we emphasize too when we're leading these group hikes. We tell people, let your significant other, let your partner, let whoever it is, you know, a loved one, let them know where you're at. Let uh, Take a picture of what you're wearing, um, you know, so that they know what you were wearing last. Um, you know, I think was it, Last year, uh, around this time, a, f a friend of mine, well, Justin, uh, one of his friends, his dad got 
uh, caught in a, in a snowstorm up at Mount Pinos up, the, up here in the Los Padres National Forest. Um, and he survived, um, you know, but the, the key takeaways on that was his family knew where he was at, they knew what he was wearing, um, you know, so it's very emphasized when we lead these hikes, we emphasize this information to people and let them know, hey, let somebody know where you're going. You know, uh, I have friends that I reach out to. I'll send them a, a lifeline uh, through the All Trails app and let them know, hey, I'm going to start this hike. Um, and they do it vice versa. You know, it's just, it's very important to let people know where, you, uh, you know, where you're at and, and what's going on, especially, you know, with that, that feature on All Trails, you're able to um, track their progress and know if they're okay. And if something, you know, that little tracker stops moving, you know, that's when you got to kick into action and start trying to figure out, hey, what's going on? Right. Yeah. Well, great tips, everybody. Wow. Um, let's see. Uh, any more questions here? How about a condor, add condor peak to the six pack? Oh, that's interesting. We'll have to go through. I'll have to go through your. We're we're gonna write up on the hour. I planned for an hour tonight. Um, if if there's anybody else who has a question, wants to jump in, um, please feel free. Or you know, you have um, you know, just connect questions about you know finding other people to hike with. One of the things that um, sometimes works is like for the six pack. It, it, it's amazing. Like somebody um towards you know december people are trying to finish their six pack challenge before the end of the year and there was somebody who was you know trying to finish san diego and there was one peak they wanted to do and it was i think it was el cajon and they posted on i think a tuesday in the discussion forum on social hiker hey i want to hike this you know by friday of this week you know and i'd <laughs> like to go with somebody is anyone available who wants to do this and they found somebody and they you know, exchanged their phone numbers and whatever and, and did the hike. So um, that's another great way to be able to connect with people. There's, you know, obviously you can do the same thing on like social media, Instagram and all of those things. But um, um, more and more, we're seeing some of those connections right in the, in the forums on Social Hiker. So pretty awesome. Yeah. And you know, with that, with, with that, when you meet up with people, or you decide to carpool and you've never met the person, try to see what, how, what pace they go at, because it could be that you go with somebody that's a lot slower and you're gonna be waiting for hours right there at the parking lot or vice versa, they're gonna leave you behind and have to you know, catch a ride in Uber later on. So, I mean, that's another thing to look when you're joining groups, you know? Yeah. And I think that's something that, um, you know, we should all kind of know like what our pace is, like how many miles we cover based on the kind of vertical gain in the terrain right. that we're going on. Not everybody knows that. So a lot of people are new to it or they're just coming back into it and they haven't really thought about it. It's something that probably like Philip says, you know, it's a teachable thing. You're like, oh, well, let's, you know, how do we calculate what our pace is, you know, that kind of thing. And you can use those, you know, snack breaks on the trail to talk about things like that um right one important one important thing also when people join groups and hikes don't just look at the miles or the hike look at the elevation gain because <laughs> sometimes you know that that has a lot to do with it you know you might you you might have yeah okay six miles but those six miles might be four thousand feet of elevation gain or more you know so you gotta also do your homework you know before joining a group do your homework on the group and then on the the trail for sure for sure and um and other things like snow uh, you know snow conditions can slow things down you know like oh yes. uh, you might be able on dry ground be able to make you know three miles an hour you know or two and a half miles an hour but in snow it might go down to one mile an hour you know just because it's yep. just a slower pace and so you have to be aware of that um one last question kind of like for the whole everybody who's here has anybody ever had hikers anxiety about being you know holding up the group like oh gosh i don't know if i want to do this hike i don't want to be the slowest one 
I, I honestly, I, I sometimes I've had that. Yeah. We've what do you do? That, How do you help people through that? You know, because it can be an obstacle for people like not actually going and signing up to do a hike because they're just afraid that they're going to be, you know, they're not strong enough a hiker, or they're not fast enough, or they're going to be embarrassed or whatever. So how do you, how do you bridge that gap? Any ideas? So Jose, um, oh, and I go ahead, Linda. Yeah. Jose and I recently, we, that happens yeah, almost every hike. You'll have at least one or two hikers that feel like they can't make it. And oftentimes we know their ability because we've been on the trail with them before. And it's a mental block for whatever reason it is that particular um, peak. And you just kind of coach them through and you say, okay, one step at a time, we'll take it one marker at a time, right? We set up mental markers for them and then walk through that. And it's really encouraging. Jose learns everyone's personality. So either he'll cheer you on or he'll kind of poke at you and going, you're going slower than that person. They're 75. Let's move it. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll figure that out with you. Um, Paul, who's on here, summited Baldy for the first time um, with snow after a little bit of training. And he was in his own head. He did better than most of us. And, and he was a little slower, but he got through it. And so Gladys also that's on here that um, leads with our group will also do that. So she actually does that with me. So if I slow down, you know, we are, in, I'm in my head with a peak, she'll, she'll encourage or she'll poke a little. So uh, I, re I remember, I remember seeing a bumper sticker one time that said, um, I may be slow, but I'm in, I'm ahead of you. I need to get a patch like that for my day pack, you know, just like, yeah, hey, you know, I, if oh, you're reading this, cool. I'm ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, any last words of advice? All right, well, folks, hey, thank you guys cool. all for joining. You know um, cheers to group hikes and connecting with other hikers. I think it's been a lot of fun to just hear from some of these other groups that I've seen online, you know, I've seen on social media and all that. And it's really great to be able to like talk to you, even though it's virtually. And um, thanks for being a part of this. Have a great evening, everybody. I'm going to, um, there will be a recording of this. We'll pop it up on Social Hiker probably tomorrow, by tomorrow night, we'll say. And, uh, and I'll try to grab um, the notes and the links from the chat. If there's anything that you want to add, we can um, you can add that in the comments on that blog post when we get that live. Sound cool? Sure. Have a great evening, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Bye. You, Thank you again. Have a good night, guys.